Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm wearing the Fenty today, do you like it? If it's your first time here, my name is Alicia and welcome to Kinky Sweat. If you love all things makeup and flexibility, movement, beauty, what have you, then you're in the right place. And if you wanna see more of my movement adventures, what I do on a daily basis, just head over to my Instagram. Today, as per many requests, this is a beginner backbend tutorial video. It's not necessarily a follow along. If you still wanna follow along and I still need to film follow alongs my split tutorials those are coming I promise this is more designed for those who have never done back bends before who are afraid to do them and don't quite know how to execute them safely and properly being that I started flexibility very uh, old in terms of me starting around 28 years old and what I mean started is to work extensively consistently in flexibility training and delving into contortion. I ran into techniques and situations and all that that I feel help adults learn how to execute flexibility backbends easier. If you already know how to do backbends and you're already doing skills like elbow stands and handstands, then yes, this video is not for you. If you can do a bridge comfortably, but maybe it hurts or you feel like you're not getting into your shoulders or your hips and it's all in your low back, then maybe you can gain something from this video. First and foremost, please make sure that you're able to exercise or to stretch if you have any conditions and your physician says that you're not allowed to work out, I don't want you to get in trouble, okay? Just make sure you're clear to do any physical activity. Secondly, please make sure you're warmed up. I will suggest things I like to do to warm up the body. It is very important. If you start stretching without increasing your blood circulation or body temperature, it can be dangerous, okay? Don't do it. Thirdly, take your time. Flexibility is a slow process. It doesn't have to be snail slow, but it does take time. I found these exercises, drills, stretches will help you get there in a way that maybe you found you never did just stretching passively. Lots of active drills and different exercises to help you get there. I will put the reps and time next to the stretches when we're in those positions, and then I'll see you after. First things first, let's warm up this body. I like to trot around, high knees, light jogging, take it around the room. Here I go, back and forth, being silly, lateral slide, shuffles, what are those called? Oh man, here we go, close to the camera. And I would like to do this a uh, five to 10 minutes, arms up, down, across, whatever's gonna get that body temperature up. Next phase is to warm up the joints, which plays a vital role in how successful you will be in your flexibility training. First, we'll start with the neck with some light circles to the right and to the left. Then we get into the hips, which I find is one of my most favorite ways to get those joints warmed up, going into more into the chest and the shoulders, and then slowly progressing into a body roll, first with the upper middle back, and then eventually into the lower as well, making it into a fuller body roll, going from hip, middle back, upper, and neck. Here, what I like to call chest puffs, just slowly getting deeper into opening the chest and shoulder blades, finding that arch and curl position, standing and also on your knees if you rather do it on the floor. I add the arms to get more into the shoulders as well. It just provides a little more of an opening sensation for me. And I could also progress this into arch and curl circles, taking it one direction and then reverse it, scooping into the curl and sweeping back and around into a beautiful arch, widening the chest and extending the back. Another variation, just simple shoulder circles that can be often overlooked, but let me tell you how effective these are, especially when you incorporate opening the chest and pulling the shoulder blades together. And I take the shoulder circle, reversing it, going from back to front from the arch into the curl. These movements are not only effective in lubricating the joints, but also to warm up the body. <laughs> And yes, we also have to warm up the legs because they play even more of a vital role in back bends, as you'll see in a moment. If you have any knee issues, just keep the lunge stationary, place both feet down, and just go up and down carefully. This is perhaps the most important section in the back bend tutorial, getting into these hips because let me tell you how vital they are in these back bends, man. Hips are the foundation for safe and technically sound back bends and how does that happen? Well, let's start with the 90-90 lunge. I go deeper into detail with this lunge series in my front split for beginners tutorial if you want to check that out i'll put the card up here and also the video link down below in the description box i just go back and forth with my pelvic position bringing it eventually into a tuck position pulling the tummy in and the hips forward 
then moving into the low lunge position where many of us, including myself when I first started, lean forward and this is what we're trying to avoid. If it's too much on the back hip, grab some blocks or whatever that's going to provide you height. Keep the torso tall over the hips and try not to lean over that leg, even with the support from the blocks or anything that provides height. Other side here, around five times in and out of it, just to slowly ease in. Here is an open hip variation where I heel toe the thigh out so it is externally rotated and I drop my body lower, pressing out the thigh but keeping the back thigh parallel. And now the heel to butt series where you're activating the glutes to get the heel in and not just using the hamstring. And this activation exercise will play a huge role in the bridge later on in this tutorial. If we can get the heel using our activation, then we can gently pull it in, but don't let those hips spike. Drop them low and get the heel in with that hip extension position. Moving on to the other side with the same exercise. It's shoulder time. Grab a strap. Back into the lunge, yes we're doing lunges again, get used to it, and I do a dislocator using the strap going up and around in front and then back around behind. This is a great way to not only get into the hips but at the same time moving more into the shoulders as well because you will see how huge of a role shoulders play in back bends. And the reason why several individuals experience low back pain in back bends is because they cannot get into their shoulders to further deepen the curve and extension of the spine and they put it all in their lower back. But if we get into the shoulders, man, you will see the light. So let's talk about it. Have a seat cross leg around the knees. I like on the knees. And this is what you'll probably want to do while we're pressing the arms back. We bend the elbows, we get sloppy. Try to get the elbow straight and just isolate the shoulders and then maybe you can try with puffing the chest forward. If it's too tough to keep your fingers interlaced and separate the fingers and just try to get the arms as far behind you as you can. Avoid the arm flop, yes. Work to get those arms as straight as you can. If you want to incorporate the chest, then try to keep your elbows straight as you puff the chest forward. If you didn't want to do dislocators in the lunge, then you can certainly most do them on your knees or in a cross-legged position. Go as wide as you need to just so that the elbows don't bend when you bring the arms up and over. Grab some blocks or old high school textbooks, whatever works. And here's the puppy stretch, and this is what people usually do. Their hips are on the heels, but now we have to bring the butt forward so they're over the knees, hands on the blocks, and try to drop your armpits down to the ground. I'm getting rid of the pad because it's a little too squishy for this. But see how you try to get the armpits down, eventually, yes, chin on, face forward, and chest to the floor. Trying to maintain a neutral spine ensures that we get into the shoulders more, but then if you feel more comfortable, yes, you could drop the chest. Here is a more shoulder isolated exercise, one by one, bringing the elbow on the block, trying to drop the armpit down. And this is a lot more shoulder specific than with the straight arm variation that you previously saw. Here I bring both elbows on the blocks and gently go up and down, inhaling on the lift, exhaling on the drop, focusing on the shoulders and not just dropping into the low spine. Moving into the block stack, which I find is a great way to get into the middle back. Here is the medium level stack and bringing the base of the shoulder blades onto the block, trying to drop your head on the arms behind you and dropping the butt to the floor. This is a more advanced stack than the one that I usually use. You'll probably find the arms high. I have very flexible shoulders naturally and this is why they're low. And if you find the shoulders to be very tight, I slowly then sweep them in toward the waist and back overhead. And I find that if you slowly go through the sweeping motion that the shoulders will eventually open instead of you just hanging out with the head down, especially if you have trouble breathing, remaining still in that position. Let's talk about the chest. Also plays a vital role in back bends because what goes back must come forward. And if you're extending your spine, it's really important that we also open the chest so there is room for that expansion when you are extending the spine. The arm behind you is shoulder height and you slowly bring a top arm over just to get as close as you can. And here another bonus arch and curl variation but seated instead of the standing one we did earlier in the tutorial. Hands are on the knees to encourage that expansion of the chest when it comes forward and to pull the shoulder blades together thinking that they're pulling through the chest as well. Oh, the seal stretch. Blech. How many of you have those shoulders way up into the ears? Well, let's talk about it. Instead of subjecting ourselves to that, we're going to take the Spider-Man variation where the fingertips are wide, elbows are high, and we'll slowly inhale up, exhale down, 
maybe add an arm extension because we're slowly starting to move into our active middle back exercises where we have no business pushing ourselves in a position where we can't hold. And don't use that neck and don't start flinging those arms around. Try to control the arm reach overhead and keeping the neck extension consistent with where you can bring your middle back to. And once you've mastered a single arm reach, then you could go into a double arm reach. But remember, the same control is required. And if you want to take this variation where the arms are on the floor, you sweep them by the hips and gently sweep them above your head and then eventually they'll come off the floor where you're able to be strong enough in lifting the chest using your extension strength. Your whole posterior chain is helping to support that weight, gently sweeping up on the breath in, exhaling down with control. Now that was the upper and the middle back, let's get into the low spine. Slow control single leg raises using your hip extension and your glute strength. Eventually, yes, two legs, but there's no swinging up. Is a controlled lift. Another variation is to lift the legs, bend the knees, and bring your heels to butt, and trying to lengthen the toes behind while the thighs are off the floor, ideally. Third variation is the diamond thigh lift with the toes together and the thighs lift off the floor. A great way to strengthen your low spine as well as the hamstrings and the glutes. And eventually we'll bring both portions together, lifting the chest and legs off the floor simultaneously but with control. And if that's too much, you just bring the fingertips down and try to lift the legs with that assist. If the shoulders are still rising, that means we gotta take the forearms down and try to get that chest forward. Yeah and that neck long, draw the shoulder blades back and down, relax to feel the difference as if you're pulling your forearms toward the rib cage. Feel what that tension does to the chest, it widens it. And if you insist on bringing your hands together in a seal stretch and it doesn't feel great, take the hands wider, keep the support in the belly up, even in your extension. Try to get the chest forward and we can slowly roll it down and arch it up in a sequence of around five, making it smooth and fluid just to get into that extension. In preparation for toes to head, try to bend one knee at a time while the chest is up, but activating the glutes and the hamstrings. And if that's too high, just do it on your forearms in the same way. Pull heel to butt and squeeze the glutes. When trying to get heel to butt, it's not just about flinging into it. It's more about activating the legs in the same way we did in those leg lifts in the posterior chain exercises. So it's not just back, it's legs as well, which just goes to show that back bending is a total body experience. A drill to help reach back for the legs if you ever wanted to progress to that skill, getting the chest up and slowly starting to rotating and reaching back same side arm to leg and eventually you'll be able to reach to the opposite leg that requires a little more extension and a little more lift in the chest. And also being able to keep the chest up with pulling your heel to butt at the same time, no sinking. And if that happens on your forearm, no sinking. Push the chest up, bring your heel to butt to get into the legs as well while extending the spine. Keep in mind, back bending takes a toll. If you ever need, just come into a neutral spine and wrap on the exhale. Avoid forward folding of any kind, especially if you're not done. Let's start thinking about the actual back bend position. Here I have my hands behind the hip and I'm slowly pressing my hips up. Remember those lunges we did earlier? This is where they come into play. Press down through the heel as if you're trying to get that butt forward. Hip up and forward, activate the hamstrings and the glutes to open the hip and assist in this back bend. If you like to enter from the floor and you press the hips up but the head is low, what about those hips? Press them as high as you can. But what about those shoulders? They're so far forward. This is why the shoulders are so important in back bends. Look how they get most out of the low back and into the chest. And all these arch and curl dislocator exercises we did in the beginning is how they contribute to a safer and more C-curved back bend. And here's a freeze frame just so you can see the difference between back bend number one and back bend number two. Back bend number one, the hips are not being utilized nor are their shoulders. Back bend number two, the hips are being pressed up. We're getting to that hip extension. Shoulders are open, more into the chest, therefore less in the low back. Which brings us to the age old question. Do you squeeze your butt or not in a back bend? Well, let's talk about it. 
If I were to go back and not squeeze my butt and just rely on my back to go, yeah, maybe I'll kind of get there, but it's awfully uncomfortable. All right, well, I'll squeeze my butt, but not actually do anything with my hips. They're stationary. You got to squeeze and press those hips forward in order to get back. If we were to drop back, the only way that we can do so safely is to use the hip. Look at those lunges, how they come into play. Hip forward, 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 hip forward. And the same sensations we were looking to create in our lunge series is the same leg strength we need to get back up and lower down with control. Let's head over to the wall for some middle back work, yeah? Around arms length away, start to sweep the arms behind you, gauging how close you need to get so the fingers can actually touch by puffing the chest forward into that arch and curl position. So the same position we did on the blocks on the floor is what you're trying to enter now standing. A little tougher to feel because you're standing and you don't have the floor under your tush, but pretend that the wall is the floor and you're trying to get your tush to touch the wall. People usually don't get into their middle spine, then they start to go into the low back and this is what happens and it feels awful. No, push that butt back, get that chest forward, and if the shoulders are crying, more puppy stretches for ya, and stay there, one arm at a time, shoulder down, armpit down. Wall back bends are a great way to gauge how much of your shoulders you're not using because if you're not, you'll be very far from the wall. So blocks near the wall, hands on, carefully push up with your legs and try to get your chest to touch the wall, armpits to touch the wall. They might not, but you know what? Carefully just move in and out slowly. You can slowly shift back and forth around five times and when your chest is as close as you can get, with comfortable breath in through the nose and out the mouth, you hold it for around 30 seconds up to a minute and use those legs to try to get that chest and armpits to the wall. Some skills that you might encounter with backbending, the pigeon, oh, when you're trying to get that foot and it feels impossible, you gotta flex, grab, and get that elbow close and rotate the elbow point up and that's how you get into the rotation. This is perhaps not my most favorite way to get the foot, I like to go from overhead reach because this is actually a lot better for your shoulder. And the heel to butt is what we practiced before with the lunge series. Getting that chest forward, arms back, activating the glutes, and this is why it's important to stay on the hips and not roll over to your side. And why it's even more so important to be on a square split because if you try to bend your back knee and your leg is turned out, well maybe we need to go into a low lunge, try to bend your knee from there reach overhead and grab and yes looking back helps because you can see where your foot is to grab if the overhead grab feels tight yes it could be shoulders but it also could be our side bends the side body plays a vital role in back bends in that is another source of expansion that we could utilize in helping the spine extend without overusing it the more space we could find in the front and side of our body the more comfortable the back bend will feel and after you're finished, it is so important to cool down properly and thoroughly. I love slow roll downs and roll up when you're articulating through your spine, scooping the belly in, trying not to swing up in order to sit up, but using your abdominal control to do so. And while we're cooling down, let's make a few notes about what we learned in this tutorial that maybe you encountered. Back bending is a lot of nervous system stimulation and in order for you to control your nervous system and its reactions is for you to learn how to use your breath in back bending. If you hold your breath, that equalizes panic and your body can't learn to be and feel comfortable in that position. If at any point any of these exercises feel intense, ease out of it and slowly start to ease in when it feels comfortable and that you can breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth smoothly and fluidly. One of the number one indicators that you're not ready for any position is that you can't breathe in it. If you find that you're holding your breath, then we're not ready for it quite yet and we need to take more steps to enter those positions that initially might feel uncomfortable but eventually will feel comfortable especially when you learn how to use your breath in conditioning your nervous system to be okay in that position. And after you've done all your forward folds, hip openers, and twists, then you're ready to take a nap. Thank you again for joining me today, friends. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. I would love to hear your feedback, and I'll see you again next time.